It's cataractcoach.com, and we're watching a routine cataract case here. But we want to talk about why it's important for young surgeons in training to master pivoting in the eye. That's a very critical thing in cataract surgery in particular. So in this case, we've just put anesthetic inside the eye, and we're going to fill the anterior chain with viscoelastic. Now watch how the cannula goes inside the eye. So it goes across... Notice it doesn't touch the coronal endothelium, doesn't touch the lens capsule, and we get a nice big fill of the anterior chamber. And obviously the viscoelastic is important to deepen that anterior chamber. So when we perform the next step, our capsule rexus, we have a lot of working room and the anterior lens capsule is flat. Now watch carefully. What I want to show you is how we pivot in the incision. So the forceps go in the center, poke in and grab the edge of the capsule. But notice how the forceps will pivot in the incision. They'll float in the incision. There's no pushing up against the side of the incision or the roof or the floor of the incision. By floating in the incision, we maintain the viscoelastic fill, keep the anterior lens capsule flat, and make the caps rex as far more predictable. Just like that. And that's a pretty darn round capsule rexus. Now the same pivoting idea is here with the balance salt solution on the blunt cannula for the hydro dissection. Notice how it goes just under the rexus edge, fluid waves go across. Here we're expecting to lose viscoelastic because we put fluid, the BSS, in the eye. So there's a little more dab of viscoelastic. Same concept for pivoting the incisions with the phaco probe. So we'll put in the phaco probe here in the right hand, choppers in the left. You can certainly switch hands as well. And look at the lights in the center of the cornea, how they stay relatively fixed. They don't move around. The eye stays in primary. We did an initial chop that didn't fully propagate through, so we'll rotate the nucleus, buzz again, place the instrument, chop again. Now we've got a little piece. We can bring that one up. But throughout all of this, we keep the eye in primary position. Those lights on the center of the cornea stay on the center of the cornea. Now, there are only a few exceptions of where we'll get the eye out of primary. One would be taking out sub-incisional cortex using the IA probe, or maybe if there's a nuclear chip or nuclear piece that's also very close to the main incision or paracentesis. But otherwise, we do want to pivot in the incisions and keep the eye in primary, basically the entire case. There's that last piece. Now we'll switch to the IA probe. I also want to talk to you about whether or not you should use a femtosecond laser or forceps to do your capsular rexus. And early in your learning curve, at least for the first few hundred cases, just use a manual method. So capsular rexus forceps would be ideal, or you can use a cystotome, but avoid using a femtosecond laser because that'd be a crutch. Now take out the rest of that cortex, clean up our capsular bag. That looks really good. So you can make a beautiful capsular rexus with just your hands. There is no need for the half million dollar femtosecond laser. Certainly later, after you've learned your first few hundred cataract cases, it's perfectly fine and recommended even to try out all new technology that you have access to. And then you can make a critical judgment whether or not that technology is important for your patients or your in your hands. Fit in our capsular bag with our cohesive viscoelastic. We can see there's a nice round rexus. And now we're going to deliver our lens, a single piece acrylic lens, going to go in the capsular bag. So here we go, delivering that lens. Key here is, again, keep the eye in primary. Clear it under the nasal rexus edge. Now deliver the whole lens, get the chopper or the second instrument, and dial the lens where we want it. So pivoting is very important in this surgery. Even if you go on to change specialties, instead of doing cataract surgery, you do full-time vitro-retinal surgery. That surgery is even more dependent on the ability to pivot with the incisions. In fact, you control eye position and control access inside the eye with pivoting in VR surgery. So here's removing the viscoelastic from behind, and we'll come in front of the eye and remove the rest of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber, and that looks great. And you can see that's a really nice overlap 
five millimeter Rex is just about perfectly overlapping a six millimeter optic. Taking out the last bit of this glass, keeping the lens exactly where we want at the center. All that's left now is just to seal up the incisions and call this a day. So practice, practice, practice. You can certainly do a beautiful capsorexis. It's normal to have a learning curve there. It's not easy, but I assure you, you can do it given enough, given enough time. And I think you'll find you'll be like me where I actually prefer forceps for most cases instead of a femtosecond laser. Thank you for watching.